Remove the shift knobs by prying out the insert. Removing the lock nut and then unscrewing the knob from the shift lever. Shift boot, console, transfer case, and transmission shifter styles will vary depending upon the year of your truck. Remove the screws holding the shift boot to the floor or console. Remove the boot. Some boots clip into the console instead of being held in by screws. Remove the screws holding down the transmission and transfer case shift lever boot on early models or transmission shift lever boot on late models. Remove the boot. Remove the shift lever. This scene shows the removal procedure for 1994 to 1997 transmissions. On 1998 and newer models, first unscrew the shift lever from the shift stub. Then unbolt the four bolt cover and remove it from the top of the transmission. Cover the hole with a rag or plastic bag. Raise and safely support the vehicle. Mark the propeller shaft components so they may be reinstalled in their proper orientation. Remove the clamp retaining the boot to the slip yoke on two piece drive lines. Pull the boot off the slip yoke. Remove the bolts and straps holding the propeller shaft to the rear axle. Pry the U-joint out of the yoke and remove the propeller shaft. Support the forward propeller shaft with a jack and remove the bolts holding the center bearing support to the cross member. Place a drain pan under the transfer case rear output. Carefully lower the propeller shaft, being careful that the center bearing support does not swing down and hit you. Pull the drive shaft out of the transfer case. Most models have a spacer between the skid plate support and frame. Support the skid plate with a jack and remove the two bolts and two nuts that hold it to the vehicle. Watch for the frame spacers as you lower the skid plate. Remove the bolts and straps holding the front propeller shaft to the front axle. Pry the U-joint out of the yoke. Remove the bolts holding the constant velocity joint to the transfer case. Remove the shaft. Take note of the location of the various wires and hoses. Remove the vacuum connector from the transfer case. Remove the transfer case vent hose. Separate the transfer case shift rod from the lever. Remove the transfer case shifter assembly from 1994 to 97 transmissions. Disconnect the speedometer connector and wire from the transfer case on 94 to 97 models. Support transfer case on a suitable jack. Remove the six nuts holding the transfer case to the transmission. <laughs> 
You may want to place a drain pan under the back of the transmission to catch trapped oil from leaking seals. Remove transfer case from transmission. Disconnect vacuum hoses from axle shift unit. Cap vacuum connections on shift motor. Disconnect vacuum hoses from frame piping and cap pipes. Remove three screws holding vacuum piping to frame and cross member. Remove two nuts holding transmission mount to cross member. Support transmission on transmission jack and jack transmission off cross member. Remove transmission mount. Remove eight bolts holding cross member to frame. Remove cross member from between frame rails. Remove transmission support bracket. Disconnect wires from backup switch. Unclip any wires attached to transmission. Remove clutch slave cylinder. Remove eight bell housing to engine bolts. Remove transmission from vehicle. A complete exhaust system in good shape will support the engine. Support the engine with a jack if there is any question about the exhaust system condition. On 1994 to 97 models, the transmission shift tower will usually just clear the cab floor cutout if the transmission and bell housing are removed as an assembly. However, in some cases you may have to jack the front of the engine up to allow the shift tower to clear the floor. The transmission and bell housing should separate from the engine with little trouble. If it does not, chances are the pilot bearing has failed and pieces of the bearing are wedged between the input shaft and flywheel. If this is the case, you will have to force the transmission from the engine with a pry bar. Be careful not to damage the flywheel housing or bell housing. Install clutch alignment tool. If you plan on reusing the clutch, number the clutch cover so that you may remove the bolts alternately and evenly. Be careful! Clutch and flywheel are very heavy. Unbolt the clutch cover from the flywheel. Remove the clutch. Remove seven of the eight flywheel bolts. Leave the eighth bolt just partially threaded. Free the flywheel from the crankshaft hub. Unscrew the remaining bolt and carefully remove the flywheel from the engine. Inspect crankshaft seal for leakage. Replace with the QK6000 seal kit. The flywheel must be resurfaced before installing your new clutch. Apply 242 thread locker to flywheel, clutch cover, bell housing and transfer case bolts and nuts. Install flywheel, torque bolts to 101 foot-pounds in a criss-cross pattern. Sealed pilot bearing can be installed before cleaning flywheel. Open stock bearings should be installed after next step. Clean flywheel surface with brake clean. Most clutches are marked as to the flywheel side.
Insert alignment tool in Clutch Hub and install Clutch Disc onto flywheel. Place clutch cover on flywheel and install bolts finger tight. Verify that alignment tool is not bound up. Mark location of clutch cover bolts in a crisscross fashion. Alternately and evenly tighten clutch cover bolts one quarter turn at a time. Occasionally, check to make sure the alignment tool remains free in the clutch hub. Complete the installation by torquing the clutch cover bolts to 17 foot-pounds. Coat input retainer stub with grease before installing release bearing. Remember to lube the clutch pivot ball and check that the spring is in good shape and holding on to the pivot ball. Lightly lube the clutch splines with grease. Apply anti-seize to the outside of the dowel pins. Shift transmission into gear. Raise transmission and start input shaft into clutch hub. Rotate output shaft to line input shaft splines to clutch hub. Push transmission forward. If everything is lined up, it should go in easily without force. Push the bell housing against the flywheel housing. Install and torque the bell housing bolts to 33 foot-pounds in an alternate fashion. Remember to reattach any clips or brackets retained by the bell housing bolts. Install the clutch slave cylinder. Torque the nuts or studs to 19 foot-pounds. Apply dielectric grease to the backup light connector. Plug the connector into the switch. Install the exhaust hanger bracket and or mount adapter to the transmission. Clean the mating surfaces of the frame and cross member. Install the cross member into the vehicle. Apply anti-seize to the cross member bolt threads. Insert the bolts through the cross member and into the frame rail. Install and torque the nuts to 50 foot-pounds. Install the transmission mount to the transmission bracket. Torque the bolts to 45 foot-pounds. Lower the transmission onto the cross member. Install the flanged nuts onto the mount studs. Attach the transfer case to the transmission. Install and tighten transfer case attaching nuts in an alternate pattern to 30 to 35 foot-pounds. Reattach the vacuum and vent hoses to the transfer case. Apply dielectric grease to the transfer case speedometer connector. Plug the connector to the output unit and clip the wire to the bracket on the transfer case. Bolt the transfer case shifter to the transmission extension housing. Connect the transfer case shift rod to the transfer case shift lever. Attach the vacuum piping to the cross member and right frame rail. Reconnect the vacuum lines. Lube the shaft of the slip yoke. Install the slip yoke into the transfer case output. Bolt the carrier bearing support to the cross member. Lube the stub shaft splines with a quality grease. 
place new clamp on boot. Line up propeller shaft match marks. Slide slip yoke onto splines. Attach propeller shaft to rear axle. Assemble straps and bolts to yoke. Torque bolts to 22 foot pounds. Wipe off excess grease from around boot and slip yoke. Tighten clamp to boot by squeezing ear with appropriate pliers. Apply anti seize to counter bore of CV flange. Attach CV flange to transfer case front output flange. Torque bolts to 65 foot pounds. Attach shaft to front pinion yoke. Torque bolts to 14 foot pounds. Apply anti seize to the cross member bolt threads. Install the cross member in place. Torque the cross member to frame bolts to 40 foot pounds and the skid plate to cross member bolt to 30 foot pounds. Check transmission and transfer case oil levels. Then lower vehicle to the floor. Install shift lever into transmission. Install boots, console, and shift knobs. 